for disrupting the peace of Abuja. MC Oluero and the rest of them that actually made video of the invasion, of the destruction of everything. Eh? They put somebody there to act as interim until Tifnubu comes back. And in the video, there is a particular video. I can't share that because he has this uh, copyright uh, audio in the background. There's a video of uh, MC Oluero and then uh, Wasiu K1. And MC Oluero touted, eh? talking about all of those who are his boys, the ones in Lagos, the ones in other places, and the ones that are now in Abuja. And he said, this is the acting chairman, so, so, and so, which I am going to be, inshallah, very soon. So you may probably hear the news soon and say, MC Oluero has been appointed. Uh, the national. So I'm just kind of letting you how degenerated a rigged gang of the a gang of the federation truly represents a mean. But let's go back to Akuri Nigalai Lai that would then take us to America. I'll drop some snippets and all that there. Then I'm going to take you to Bangladeshi, the countries that uh, Peter B is famous for mentioning among others. So they were doing Commonwealth uh, micro investment, something, something. Mm -hmm. And the obedient have been kind of uh, raging when they saw Obi talking, like, you know, with uh, all those people there. They were like, ah, ah, Yakubi no go better for you. I ne God go punish you. Eh? You denied us this place. I said, oh, now, nah, sure. I shall calm down. Let's hear Akuri. I don't mean you should believe everything you have to say here, but I have to play it so that it can lead us to the next stage of our convo, right? Listen. Um, the engagements he's going to be having uh, at the General Assembly, uh, aside from the active participation uh, that uh, the Nigerian delegation uh, will be uh, engaging in at the Assembly, there are a series of very important side activities that will have wide-ranging ramifications on the Nigerian economy. Uh, as you are well aware, following uh, Mr. President's very successful trip uh, to New Delhi for the G20 uh, and the staggering amount of investment he has been able to attract uh, to Nigeria in a very short period of time, uh, he is going to continue advancing very aggressively. Uh, on his economic development uh, diplomatic uh, drive uh, to aggressively attract foreign direct investment into the country. So with that, uh, I would like to inform you that uh, His Excellency Mr. President uh, will be having the following meetings uh, with uh, major chief executives and uh, leaders uh, of uh, multinational firms cutting across uh, multiple sectors uh, of the economy. Uh, the President will be meeting uh, with the president uh, of uh, the Microsoft company worldwide, uh, Brad Smith, uh, with respect to how we can deepen uh, digital transformation in the country uh, and to how we can uh, expand uh, the digital uh, economic footprint in the country uh, to ensure that uh, our micro and small enterprises uh, will have access uh, to the internet and have access uh, to other uh, smart technologies that will uh, facilitate uh, their ability uh, to uh, transact business quickly uh, and efficiently. Uh, Mr. President will also be meeting with uh, Sir Nick Clegg, uh, who is the President of Global Affairs for Meta Technologies. Uh, that is expected to be a wide-ranging conversation uh, with uh, respect to how uh, we can uh, leverage on uh, new uh, innovations uh, such as uh, artif artificial intelligence and certain other applications uh, to uh, impact the way uh, we do business uh, in Nigeria. Uh, His Excellency, Mr. President, will also be meeting with the global CEO of General Electric. Uh, of course, the General Electric is a very well-known uh, international organization that cuts across multiple sectors. They have uh, very deep involvement uh, in the energy sector, electric power generation, uh, aviation, uh, you know, engine production, 
uh, for multiple, uh, multiple uh, modes of, uh, of transportation, uh, amongst many other uh, inputs. So uh, we expect that to be a very important uh, interaction. Uh, furthermore, uh, His Excellency, Mr. President, will be meeting with the global CEO uh, of ExxonMobil, oil and gas company. Uh, we see this as a major opportunity to once again uh, lay out in detail uh, what Nigeria has on offer with respect to the implementation of the Petroleum Industry Act and the uh, fiscal uh, and tax incentives uh, that are being put forward by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to further advance uh, you know, investment uh, in the oil and gas sector, not just in terms of oil, but uh, more in terms of gas, but even in the oil sector, uh, looking very closely at what we can do uh, in the deep offshore uh, and some of the associated opportunities uh, in that sphere. Uh, again, uh, these are just one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, uh, meetings with these delegations. Uh, these are just a few of them. Uh, we are also going to be participating. His Excellency, Mr. President, will be participating in the uh, Africa uh, global uh, business uh, initiative, essentially another platform that's more like a roundtable where you're going to have uh, really, really, uh, you know, lucrative enterprises, uh, high-level uh, chief executives from around the world uh, wanting to listen in on what uh, African leaders, with uh, particular attention to uh, the Nigerian president, uh, what he has to say in terms of the opportunities available to invest in Nigeria across sectors. That's going to be another uh, major opportunity. The president will also uh, be uh, presiding over uh, an event uh, that is the Nigeria Small and Medium Scale uh, Business Summit. Uh, and this is really a very strategic one. Uh, the president is uh, determined to ensure that we don't just look at large industry, that we key in on opportunities that are being presented by small and medium scale enterprises, Nigerian owned small and medium scale enterprises, and putting our own M uh, MSMEs in a position to make an impact in foreign markets. Yes, the president is focused in on attracting foreign direct investment, attracting jobs, uh, attracting uh, new tax revenues uh, into uh, the shores of our country. But he's also focused in on making sure that homegrown Nigerian companies uh, have uh, fair and equal access uh, to foreign and international markets. Uh, this is a major aspect of uh, the kind of wealth creation that Mr. President uh, envisions uh, in his uh, renewed hope uh, agenda. So we are going to do everything we can to support uh, Nigerian small, uh, micro, and medium-scale enterprises as they uh, look to expand their operations uh, beyond the shores of Nigeria. And that is what that summit uh, is intending to do. Uh, in addition to that, the President will be uh, speaking at uh, the UN high-level reform of the global financial architecture. Uh, this is a sequel uh, to the engagement Mr. President had in Paris. Uh, it will essentially allow uh, our president to lay out his vision. We will work with you to build a Nigeria that is not corrupt. I bring you a message of hope. We are going to spend a lot of resources on education. Lori over 70 percent of what that uh, we said are just the figment of his imagination making people sit down and be like oh my god general electric ah general electric is going to come to nigeria do you know the worth of general electric over 200 billion dollars they love that in nigeria they love you know nigerians they love to read they love to read all those uh, all those uh, stats just for bragging sake do you know the worth? Do you know the size of Microsoft? Ah, over over one trillion. Do you know the size of Apple? For the president of Apple to meet with uh, Tifnumbu, do you understand what that means? Eh? Do you know how many jobs? Eh? Do you know that if Kineko Nigerians love that? In case if you come across them anywhere, okay, we are that useless. All right, we brag on empty bragging because the people where we they brag for. The people we are bragging about, they are criminals. Okay? They are actually doing all of this for what is in it for them, not for the country. Trust me. All right? So when you see Nigerians bragging, 
Eh? Do you know the size of General Electric? Do you know the size of a mobile, mobile what? Do you know what Jekinika Kinika Kinika is gone on Google to read about them? Do you know what John Sack is? Do you know what Teresa, Teresa Mobile is? I say, uh -huh. who is Teresa Mobile? <laughs> ah, my brother, you don't want that. You don't know anything. Do you know where Jack Frost is? About who be Jack Frost? <laughs> ah, you don't know anything. You see? By the time all these people enter Nigeria, enter where? I enter Nigeria. So she reni. To bari nko to omu. Oje lo jawa. Eh? I live here. I'm not saying people won't come. These are chances. See? These are people who are coming in. To raking in that corrupt system. Not to benefit you. So the egg bag gate ni. Tani Jack Frost. Tani Teresa Mobili. Who them be? Eh? How does that translate to you? Absolute nada. Bokwari, the lifeless may God, breathing money coin, eh? Also met with all of these people. Kilo Difuni, poverty capital of the world. What did that turn to? Poverty capital of the world. Shuri egg bagon, Uri egg bagon gone, I begin to go with Nuri, about Lago Gomo Lurini. Don't parry Jack Frederick. Apart from the picture opportunity, video, and all of that, eh? Baba? Shege continue ni baba. Shege ni continue. Take the pictures. Put them as your profile picture. Be happy. If that is something anyway, I don't know. Where Akuri Nigalai lai. After dishing out all, he spoke a lot to. I just had to cut it off. Share you get. We'll go to the next one. Eh? To Roti Dojo and say. Roti Dojo and say. Mm-hmm. So Akuri Nigalai Lai talked about Tifnumbu going to the US. May I show you when Tifnumbu landed in the uh is that not JFK Airport? John Ken, John F. Kennedy Airport. I'm not sure, but this must be New York. Take a look. Ah uh, no, no, we're coming back to that. Not yet. Yeah. Let be poor breathe. Don't suffocate them. We have that responsibility. Let be poor breathe. So he's landed in the in the US.
And he also met, I mean, sorry, he also met with uh, Ramaphosa of South Africa. And according to their news report in Nigeria, they said, Tifnubu told Ramaphosa, South Africa, please come and invest in Nigeria now. You know, South Africa, they a little bit okay, yeah? <laughs> I know this, my guy, uh, he's in South Africa. I've got, I've got these two guys on this platform. If they if they hear that, they say, "My group, stop it." What do you mean by South Africa is a little bit okay? Are you showing sure, joking? Anyway, you know South Africa is okay, eh? But South Africa economy is still smaller to that of Nigeria, as mismanaged as they've mismanaged Nigeria, eh? As they have looted and ruined the economy of Nigeria for decades, Baba is still bigger than the South Africa's economy. So it does, does it matter? Eh? Investment is investment, Abi. Oh, yeah, see, see Baba investor. And then so the one that is inviting investor. Uh, oh, more. Every time I see Kolu, the kind of clip I kind of love to see at the time when he's just like that, like, you know, that old man. Nothing about uh, Nigeria uh, reading speech and all of that. That one, eh? It's just what salad kind of gets some of you annoyed, right? But when you see him in his element where people are greeting him or is talking freely, just saying his own thing, eh? where you can easily see him and say, ah, oh, it's law. But apart from that, you see this old man, grandpa, like a great grandpa, tired, mentally tired, weak. Eh? What is that word? Feeble or fragile? Abi, eh? And you just look at him and then uh, if he's not a flumbu, you just adore that old age and be like, oh. But Kolu, that you know, there are some people who said the fact that Kolu claimed to be 70, nobody knows his age, nobody knows his real name, nobody knows his real parents, nobody knows anything, nobody knows where he comes from, real place he comes from. So you could do this, you just say, well, if he says he's 70 and he's like this, a sick old man, president of Nigeria, I think that would be like a joke if you see. But if you take all of that away, like just say man and all that, right? It's probably going to be, you know, I don't know. I'll show you, Sha. Iman Ramaphosa of South Africa. Please, please, space for the foreign minister. Please. Yes. 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 Minister, how are you? Thank you. Can we move back? Can we move back? Can we move back? Can we move back? And you, your friend? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, first, but least, like, first. Uh, we missed seeing this meeting. I know we saw each other. Thank you. Yeah. In the Thank you. Thank you. You know, so he's no longer called Lou that is uh, contesting election, okay? Now he's the president. And with uh, the template of uh, Bokwari, mm? that's the only thing I think they've managed to get right by bringing his uh, medical uh, team with him everywhere he goes and keeping them completely out of sight. But if he was, if it's actually in the US uh, or in this part of the world, eh, the media would have dug them out and all that. But well, that was him. 
uh, with uh, Ramaphosa. It was just like that. Like, how are you? And we, we are talking, we're thinking of uh, meeting with you and to see what, uh, you know, the Africa, it is, it's all normal. It's called diplomatic uh, stuff. But they did the same in uh, India. Uh, and it's just what they do, you know. But the only difference is that the likes of Ramaphosa will go back to South Africa. They will be able to track their development or the result of every trip they go. In that of Nigeria, it's just one of those. Or if these people return the visit and go back to Nigeria and they meet them one-on-one, 80% of them will be like, no, we can't operate here. This is... Sure you get. It is Nigeria. You know? And he will get his own photo hop. He will get all of that. And, you know, I'm still waiting for his uh, speech at uh, the United Nations, okay? Where the, that one is prepared. And he's going to talk about, uh, you know, ironically, I mean kind of surprisingly, right? Tiff Numbu is expected to talk about uh, drug trafficking and money laundering in his speech at the United Nations General Assembly meeting this afternoon. He is going to talk about money laundering, illicit money, and he's also going to talk about uh, illicit drug trafficking. But others are saying, no, he's practically going to talk more about the coup in Africa. Coup counter coup. And whatever that drama is going to be, uh, you see, I'm going to bring you that the moment I have a copy. Eh? As usual. But more we'll go to that Bangladeshi that uh, Peter B always love to mention. Any small thing. Bangladesh. Uh, you can call, uh, what's that called again? Japan. In 19, uh, this or that, you know, it's so good with that uh, numbers, right? Where he was finally in that Bangladesh to say to their faces on what he believed will help the Commonwealth uh, of Nations to combat uh, poverty, combat uh, this or that using microeconomy. This or, anyway, I'm not. I'm not an economist. So we will go hear that one before we go back to Nigeria. Here is the first uh, part. I would like to invite. Uh, for some opening remarks, Mr. Peter Obi. Now, Peter Obi is a long-time entrepreneur, a business leader, and an eminent politician from Nigeria. Mr. Obi's sense of enterprise fostered his involvement in local and national Nigerian politics, including his role as governor of Anambra. So please help me in welcoming, welcoming him to the stage, Peter Obi. You're going to see if you'll speak a few words. Well, I thought we were all panelists, but um, let me start by most sincerely thanking Prime Minister Hassania and the good people of Bangladesh for hosting us, and Lord Moland and his team for organizing this workshop. We're here to discuss SMEs and of, all of us know that SMEs, like it's been mentioned by the President, today is the engine of growth in most countries of the world. Not just developing countries, but developed countries of the world. According to the last World Bank studies and survey, SMEs is about 90% of the businesses and creates over 50% of the job globally. In developing and emerging markets like Bangladesh, they contribute about 40% of the GDP in Nigeria is a similar situation. Over 45% of the GDP in places like China, they contribute over 60%, creating seven out of every 10 jobs. In India, a similar impact. So across the Commonwealth countries, you can say it's creating the same impact. Commonwealth countries, as you know today, 
is the 56th nation of the common world with about 2.5 billion in population, a third of the world with over a billion young population and over a trillion in exports. However, the Commonwealth, if you look at the wealth of the Commonwealth, is about over 150, 150 trillion, which you could say is about 10, 10 times the size of the GDP of the Commonwealth, because the last time I looked at it, the Commonwealth GDP, total GDP is about 14.5 trillion. And over 30 times the total world export of about 5 trillion. What we are going to discuss today is the issue of how to formalize formalization and internalization of SMEs which is critical for the Commonwealth as a family. By supporting, energizing, and formalizing the, the SMEs, would have created wealth across the entire world because Commonwealth countries exists in almost five continents of the world. So by formalizing and internalizing SMEs, you actually come across the entire world by ensuring the growth of this engine of development. But there's a problem within the SMEs, which I'm sure the panelists will be giving attention to. One, it, this critical engine of growth is what it desired in today's world to be able to develop, especially, I keep saying, within the Commonwealth family. Because if you look at the scope of what they are going to add, it's, it's huge. If you look at the global economy, while I say they are a third of the population of the world, but if you look at the world GDP, is about 100 trillion, and you look at the GDP of the Commonwealth, is 14.5 trillion, which means they're just about 15% of it. If you look at the per capita, the global cap per capita. One of our main resources is oil. We're the largest oil refinery in the world. So we buy oil from Nigeria, and we refine them, and we sell it back to Nigeria. <laughs> Yeah. So you know that's basically what we do. So we are one of the largest oil refineries in the world. Right? Because we have no natural resources whatsoever. You know, if somebody tells us, you know, we even buy our water. We buy water from Malaysia. We buy crude water from Malaysia. We desalinate them, we purify it, and we sell it back to Malaysia. <laughs> Don't judge us, we need to make some money somehow. <laughs> so you know, our car, all our cars have a lifespan of 10 years. After that, we either scrap it or we resell it. We sell it to places like Indonesia, Ghana, we sell it to Nigeria and all this. So these are the people that will come and buy our 10 year car. What they do is they modify it. You you drive on the left hand, right? Right. So, but ours is on the right hand. So they they purchase this ten year car, right? With a lifespan of ten years, they buy this car and they modify it and they sell it super expensive in your country. So that's that's how they make their money. Anyway, uh, let's move to the next one. I should have used that video to tell you about Dangote Refinery. They have started again, no? Because of this plan of they are increasing the uh, price of uh, your cooking gas, the price of your petrol. They have started talking about Dangote Refinery starting work in October again. But the difference is that this time around, Dangote is not saying it wants to 
bring petrol to all of you. Dangote is saying they are going to be able to refine diesel and gas. I don't understand what that means, but probably he doesn't want, he didn't want you. Eh? I mean, he didn't want us. Eh, yeah, yeah. Let him raise That's what they would say. They would say, ah, eh, yeah, yeah. They didn't want us. Ah, why, yeah. To come back again, I say, we not tell you. They come to add extra explanation to it. They said they are going to give them 350,000 barrels every day. So Dangote, it is either there is no refinery starting any work next month, talk less of refining any diesel or gas anywhere. Because inside that same crude oil, they said they are going to allocate to him 350,000 barrels of crude oil every day. So they will give you 350,000 crude oil every day. You can't give them this one, pair, this one gas. Kilowatt shape petrol. What about petrol? So they say, no, we are not doing petrol. So you can't get this, you get gas, control the rest away. You better come clean. Because everything about them is a lie. What they are saying now is that Nigeria has approved 350,000 barrels of crude oil to Dangote refinery. And it's going to start production next month. That's on the side. Before they made that announcement, they are, they've already started dropping the hint. Cooking gas, you might also kill. You better go and buy, you know, cooking gas, Kerry, is not like yam. It no be like rice. Eh? Where you feel buy, store them. You go go buy bomb, go buy cooking gas and store them for house. I'll be waiting you go do now. Because from 7,000, I've been at 6,000 naira, it's going to go up to 18,000 naira or more before December. Baba Alaye, December is just about two months away. Kilo machines, what do you go do now? Eh? You go to stockpile cylinder of gas. Or you wait for Dangote. Emma lost stockpile cylinder. Joke apart, you, because some of you, I have seen people, there's people where, where they carry buckets, carry jerry can. They scoop oil. Eh? Tanker with full petrol fell. He said, May everybody pick race. Say, hey, pass, hey, pass. He said, No, no fire yet. There's no fire. Ah, no, 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 no. I don't want fire. May everybody run from that place where, where petrol just spilled. In Nigeria, people be, will be running towards the petrol with their own kegs, jerry can, bath, everything. Housewife, house husband, house children. If you even see pastor, or imam, everybody go go there. Eh? This is a this this is hazard, hazardous. This is dangerous. That's what you both will say. Oh, this whole area has been cordoned off. No, 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 not in Nigeria. You go see policeman. Police go park, park car. They go park their truck there. Police go carry jerry can. Go carry one small other container. They scoop petrol. So, somehow, somehow, if you are a politician, you will be like, people go, they blame us now. See, people will be see that they wish themselves death sentence anyway. They say, we, did, we, we are making life hard for them. Nigerians are dying. Everybody is dying. Everywhere you go is dying. You are blaming us that Nigerians are dying. Nigerians are dying. Uh, can you call, can you call? Who are these ones? Who sentenced them? And the mentality is the same from the north to the south, from the east to the west, from this to that. Even Niger Delta, we be see they get their own crude oil. If anything spill anywhere, they know they run away from danger. They run towards it. They say no bring, uh, as long as nobody bring smoke. Just one single, you go see housewife, eh? You go see what our housewives, they carry, they carry bath, petrol inside their house. You really, Nigeria is a special place, so. You go see people, they pour water away from their own drums because they want to stop petrol that spill on the road in their house. So I lost a cylinder because of saying it's going to be expensive. Oh. No go store cylinder for house. So no go, one single one can, can bring the whole building down. No. I lost my store cylinder, but oh my washer, it's going to be expensive soon. Petrol is going to be expensive soon. 
and then a naira to dollar in yet if you have a one thousand you go enter and pass them by december all of these are going to have their own effect on the economy generally but they are going to be telling you eh, that the greatest and the biggest uh, gold miner in the world is coming to come and start mining the gold in nigeria so nigeria will be prosperous the best casino in the world, LGBT, in the world is coming to come out. Things that will make it look like the world is coming. The world is not coming, no. Anybody will come, won't come rip you off, you know. In four years, in eight years, in 18 years, in 80 years. When I go see the shout up Nepal, Saturday we go day okay. Now from say, Friday, we go day, don't they see the sign? Back back we or you can live in denial, you won't lose money. Because I don't know when your Buddha will sit down and he's watching my Egon's diary right now. And then found out that uh, even though Nigeria is investing money in weapons to say they, they want to fight terrorism, of course, practically on the ground, they are not. It's so much like a theater, you know, like a theater there. Like, uh, I mean, what you really you don't see where bandit the corporal, uh, military commander. Talk to your boys, you terrorists with their guns, Nigerian soldiers with their guns, with their uniform. They are there. The reason why they are there is because of this terrorist. Abi, terrorists can't jam soldier. She been a fight supposed to happen. A what one is A one is peace deal. What? Which one is phone call? If you don't believe me, it's only because you don't understand Awusa. I tell you, I don't learn this uh, full and new full day. Awusa, all these languages, now sign language. I take learn now. I'll take you to one place where you will see terrorists and Nigerian army. They negotiate. Now pass, we won't pass. So. We just won't pass. So. Call your boys to order. They are here now, doing somehow, somehow. Now pass, we won't pass. So. If they do anyhow, they will see anyhow. Now talk to them. Your guy want to talk to me, really? Now, only when we say, you know, police stop you on the road. And then you are like, do you know who I am? Police say, who are you? Come out of the car. They say, okay. Your okay, guy wants to talk to you. And then you give the phone. And then you start, yes, sir. Show, sir. Show, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Show, sir. Sorry, your guy. We don't know say, we don't know say, now you. Oh, yeah, take your phone. They go, they go, they go, they go. I have never seen where terrorists call the commander of military to warn his boys so that they can pass. I have never seen it. Eh, like Jimmy. But it is Nigeria. Whatever you think you've never seen before, you will see it there. You will be dumbfounded. You will sit down and you'll be wondering, is this, is this actually real? Baba Uri Ukba. Uri Baje Baje. Ma go to, ma show you. Hello, hello, Sunusi. Dalla ina san kana ji. Ka biyo bakin hanya duka ka ga ya mu mutane cewa da Allah ga 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 fulani nan za su zo su wuce ba ruwan kowa da su. An yi magana ne yanzu za su zo wucewa kawai za su. Ka gane abu bakin hanyar nan kar wanda ya ce wani abu ga su nan wucewa kawai za su yi. Da Allah abi ga su nan za su taho yanzu da Allah. Abi a ga a ga ya mu mutane. Eh. Bi Sanusi. 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 Na pass we won't pass so. We be full of new. We be full of any terrorists. We just want to, we just want to pass. So talk to your guys. Oh, and Sanusi told his boys, "Now go the Yesu. Can you cook in the kosher? Some, some, some. Yeah, let me, me, me. The muta she mute, mute go. Me then they go. Eh? Really? Ah, I'm on levels there. Oh, if you carry gun for southern Nigeria. Eh? 
if they cash you, they get tan here. Finally, they know. I mean, who you want call? Eh? Talk less of all of us. No, all of us can't carry gun. Ah, oh my. Oh, you know what somebody, what, what, what they told me about gun? Hmm? You don't argue with somebody, you don't argue with a man carrying AK-47. You will be a fool to argue. So, person they hold gun, you they hold gun, revolutionary, you they hold gun like this. All of them can't be like 200. That is 200 guns. Eh? Or you can't enter like 400. 400 guns. Nobody will send soldiers to come and fight you. They could negotiate. Because you have your gun. Eh? In America, whenever they are coming to your house to bust you, they will go do background check. Does that person have guns in his house? Is he a gun owner? Because if you get gun, you have the right to use it. So the terrorists... They've devised that means for a while. I'm just thinking, like, you know, I'm a Yoruba man, right? I'm a Tekun in Yoruba land. Eh? There are soldiers who are ready to go after the terrorists anytime. Oh, Nigeria law says they cannot carry automatic rifles, they cannot carry AK 47. This is a security outfit established by law. Maybe somebody just slept, woke up, and said, Oh, yeah, I'm starting this. So, no, they were processed. They were so public. I'm on second to provide. They are like, they are supposed to be the forest rangers going after this armed terrorist. The terrorists are carrying AK 47 automatic rifles. And the federal government of Nigeria says, May they give condo to Amotekun. Cherish, sharing, come Do you see that now? Eh? Inside this, the same Nigeria, terrorists who have the audacity to see soldiers are not run. Terrorists who have killed thousands of Nigerian soldiers to prove their point. Eh? Baba? They will see soldiers, they will run. Then a security outfit from a region that has come under different, different of their violent attacks too. Where our people have been kidnapped, chased away from their farms. The federal government of Nigeria under Issa Malamu. You remember? No, sorry, no Issa Malamu. Uh, Abubakar Malamu. Malamu is the former attorney general of Nigeria. You can see attorney general if you don't understand Yoruba, but it's attorney general of Nigeria. Abubakar Malamu said Amotekun cannot carry gun. Now Kondo made them give them. So you go come see all these terrorists. You go come carry Kondo and say, say you be who? Eh? Ogundi Jiabi, which one? You can run, eh? you can go and put condo on the head of a terrorist, Baba. Eh? By the time you open your eyes, if you open up, you will be in a different place. And it's not going to be here. Yet, the danger exists, the solution exists, but there is a a clog in the wheel of that uh, idea. And that is what Nigeria represents. And you see that? If they enter your village, if you don't want me to destroy everything, let them pass. Where are they going? They are on their way to another place to go and destroy and kill people. And when, once they are done, they go back into their base. And the military, we know one Wahala, just let them go. You know, say you get family for house. Not to say the gun we will carry give you. This one go kill you. Nobody go, you know? That is Nigeria, in case if you don't know. Eh? Today, the justice for Mobad, justice for Mobad, the rally is gaining momentum, and some people are so surprised. Ah, police are not shooting. No. Hey, I'm a, this crowd, I'm a police, you know what I mean? Like, meanwhile, others are thinking that maybe they are just going to feel like it's okay, it's enough. The guys that are involved, they already they have been linked to they have links to the political criminals who are controlling Nigeria right now. So when this whole thing started, initially, they were making in kind of statement and all that. They more and more and more and more people are now hungry. They are now with hashtag justice for Mobad, justice for Imole, justice for Mobad. 
Now, it's not even just justice for Mobad. They've discovered that because of a because because of a corrupt country that Nigeria is, the lives of uh, young young people who have crossed uh, uh, what is his name again, uh, Fashola, Assist Fashola, which is uh, Naira Mali, and his crew, those young young people who have crossed the Papa one year with the new, I don't know what they give them. Up. Eh? Inside Nigeria. You know, Naira Male will talk uh, like that. I'll show you. Like, people need to start appreciating the effort I put into not being a serial killer. Like, like. I'm a bruv. We appreciate that uh, you are trying not to be a serial killer. But is this a Syria, uh, what do you call it? Syria change of destiny of young, young people. Eh? I don't like you. Some people will probably prefer you are a serial killer and not a musician mentoring young people. Um, I can't see image, videos of some of those uh, kids. Eh? Who have been through the Amalian this or that, drug peddling, drug pushing, drug using. Omo one year one way renew. Ha! So a lot of things are now kind of popping up and popping up and popping up to the point that majority of those who pass through him, they ended up having to. I mean, I don't know if you have noticed, oh, they seem to be talking the same way. Before they join him, they will look normal. And after joining him, and then this whole thing that is popping out, about everybody wants sort of be any tool, kind of eye on drug or has mental problem. And I am like, kill on fun or jack, kill on fun or mu. What kind of drug are they giving to them? How did that even last that long? In that, I mean, such a sister, how did they manage to bully that young man to death? What about those ones whose lives have completely been altered? What about the system that kept enabling him and indeed helping him to further frustrate and assault these young people? A lot of you today will probably, you, you, a lot of you don't understand the, how deep this is. But you would you would at some point. But you know the typical Nigerians, they are reacting. I don't know. They want the police to arrest them. Okay. So today they announced that they have exhumed the body of the young man, the musician, or the pop star, Mobad. Okay, for examination, for autopsy. So people are protesting. No, sorry, the people are rallying. Peaceful protest, they call it, or peaceful rally. Asking the government to do something. In some instances, they're asking the government to arrest Naira Mali. The damages is not just about this young man. It's actually his life, his trade, and those around him. If they really want to investigate, the evidence are out there. But unfortunately, there will be no investigation. There will be no arrest or anything of anybody. And if there is at all, it is just to put up a show, a show to kind of give you what you want. I have said this before. I'm just saying it again. All right. But things are kind of getting more like more, more and more and more out of hand. Where is music are being banned? People are following him. And others are asking that he must be arrested and questioned. So what the police want to do right now? The criminal organization called the police in Nigeria. What they want to do is this. Because people are saying they should have done autopsy, so they've exhumed the body. Okay? So they are going to say they are investigating what killed him. Cause of death. Sure you get. So cause of death. There is nothing like depression. There is likely not going to be 
assault or what have you in it, there will be cause of death. Okay? So it is just for them to come back and rule something and say, is cause of death is this, or is not caused by these guys? So once they say that to you, and a lot of you disagree, ah, it's a lie. So you are going to let him go. Can you call, can you call? That's where some people are now saying, if you don't buy the card, they are going to they are going to kind of deal you. If you don't buy it, you see this so rally, may turn to something else right before our very eyes in the coming days. But because it is Nigeria, where it is so corrupt, and cover up and cover up things like this are common. And they said, eh, where you will know this, so I'm gonna, where you will know that. There is not going to be any justice anywhere. They will define what that justice is. Okay? Eh? When the police was talking about their investigation, they were absorbing the Elegushis. They were absorbing Sonweku. They were absorbing some people that a lot of you have mentioned that they don't have any relationship with Naira Mali. Now, police, they help Sonweku eh, to tell the world that Sonweku has no relationship with Naira Mali or Malian. Therefore, they know that they believe that the trajectory of your demand is going to lead to you asking them to arrest Naira Mali. They are going to show to you that there is no justifiable cause to arresting him. Because even if they say that he's assaulted or what have you, that does not warrant that he killed him. You will disagree with that. And just like a twist, they're going to blame you that a lot of you are protesting because you are obedient. Write this down. Write it down right now. What I'm telling you right now. Write it down. Okay? You are, you are demanding for justice. You are organizing peaceful protests. And people are commenting already. It has not started to turn to Igbo versus Yoruba fight yet. But it is going to turn to Igbo versus Yoruba fight yet. A lot of you are going to look back and ask yourselves, but this, is, this wasn't how the whole thing started. Now, why is this whole thing now like this? As I'm saying this to you, write it down or just write it in your head there. Remember, you heard it here first. Okay? I have seen the crowd. These criminals don't like crowd. The crowd that they are not the ones that are promoting, they are not the ones sponsoring. Okay? Any protest, any gathering, that is not them sponsoring it. They don't feel comfortable. And the more you continue to call those rallies and all that, they will say you are blackmailing them. You are forcing them to do their job. They won't arrest him. And the more you do rallies, right before your very eyes, DSS will come out and say they have received a report that some people want to hijack your rally. And then they are not going to let that happen. The police will come out and say you must stop all the rallies because some people are coming to hijack it. So if anybody now goes anywhere to say Justice for Mobad, justice for Mobad. As you are all moving around, you may hear a breaking news. Police don't kill one person. Why? They said the protest is illegal. And before you know it, they will begin to, the Lagos Abobakus, the begotted the criminals who are also like unboot slaves, they will begin to now blame the Igbos. They will say the Igbos are the ones who wanted to burn uh, Yoruba land again. And the whole game will repeat itself. It will become a thing that even Kalu will probably say something. Am I predicting too much? Eh? Is my vivid imagination going wild? I am talking about Nigeria. I'm not going too wild. Things can go from zero to 100 in Nigeria. And the government will move out and begin to kill their citizens. And then you start asking, your, asking yourselves, how did this whole thing start, self? Where did this start from, self? How can you cook in a concept? And just like that, people will be divided along that, that I mean, along the line. Those of you who are Igbos, you will be angry that they are mentioning you. You won't know that they need to drag you into it in order to break the whole thing and break any surprising uprising. Because Nigerians, a lot, a lot of you are already living with that rage and anger about Nigeria. Any small chance, when I go join them, those of you who don't even know nobody, eh? When I go join. 
Before you know it, it could jump from mobile to others. And these guys know that they are always afraid of a rally, of a gathering that is not their own making. And they will react. And that reaction can actually lead to wherever else uh, they are not planning to go. I don't know. I'm just saying. But yes, it is spreading. Except for those who are living in denial. I'm going to show you some. In Akure, they did a night, uh, I mean, they, they did a, a sort of a night rally, which also led to a kind of a candlelight, okay? But here, the deputy governor of Lagos State, I'm going to show you that, but before that, take a look at this. <laughs> They are still there, peaceful. Hey, we need justice. We want justice, like this one. that and like i said they also had the candlelight <laughs> So remember, if things go south, remember tonight that what these young men were asking for is that the police should not bungle the case. Okay? They should not destroy the case. They should do a real investigation. And in their investigation, they will unravel a lot. They want the perpetrators punished. And the police is going to, be, to begin to take it personal soon because they will feel like you are pressuring them. You are telling them what to do. Eh? And as typical Nigerian criminals that they are, the what they know how to do best in that situation is to escalate it. And they begin to point fingers. They begin to, uh, to blame imaginary people are the ones inciting the people not to accept their I mean, verdict. Hmm? And for the record, they will tell you, she be the deputy governor visited. She be Kiniko Kinikon Shadis. She be Kiniko. All of you are just troublemaker. It's not because of Mobad. If we see you out tomorrow, we'll shoot and kill you. And that will be the beginning of it. I just thought you should know. Here is uh, Sonwe Iku's deputy. <laughs> Uh, uh, what do you call it? I'm Zat. I think that's his name. Sorry, I mean, he was there assuring the mother that. The